territory, but I think that's what uh, really makes music therapy so effective. It promotes um, also relatedness, relaxation, learning, and self-expression. And it can address multiple developmental deficits simultaneously. So we've talked often about these domain areas that I've referenced. Um, the interventions that we come up with could just be like, okay, we're doing this to target communication skills. We're doing this to target behavioral skills. But more often, um, one intervention is probably going to target five domain skills. So we're pretty sneaky when it comes to that. Um, and structure and sensory input in music inherently establishes response and role expectations positive interactions and organizations. <clears throat> so I thought, um, because we've been talking about these goal areas, and that is really what we um, base all of our treatment plans off of, um, that I would talk specifically about the goal area and then maybe some sample music therapy strategies so you can get a better idea of specifically what we might do in a session. So first we'll talk about communication skills then. Oh, sorry, that's a little, a little. Um, so something that you could do in a music therapy session to help um, promote positive communication skills might be making choices through instrumental and vocal activities, uh, echoing verbalizations of the therapist through song, or following directions and being the leader. Um, for example, a, a stop and go activity might be um, you know, we're playing a song and they're playing instruments, play the music and, or play your instrument until the music stops and then the music stops and they have to pay attention and they listen and then maybe it's their turn to leave. We're going to play a pie, play a pie, play a pie. But that's a really great way to, to work on communication skills. Similarly, you know how I talked about that we, we kind of target multiple things at once, behavior skills could also be following directions. So we could have those types of interventions that, um, really use music as a reward for them following directions. So we're all quiet, we stop playing. Okay, great, now let's play, you know, but they, they did what they needed to do, they followed directions and they were listening. Also, opportunities to be a leader in the group, that's really important. Um, obviously this is a group setting too, um, but also opportunities to follow others when they lead. And music to reinforce appropriate behavior, like I, I mentioned, um, just a little bit ago. So the next goal area is social and emotional skills. And so um, we can target this by practicing sharing or taking turns, lots of sharing, especially in group settings, um, working together as a group to make music in an ensemble, perhaps. Um, we can also have emotional expression, share our feelings through song or instruments or movement. And we can also increase self-esteem by learning new skills and interact with peers through music making. Uh, so we've talked a lot about social and emotional or behavioral or physical, but also we can target academic and cognitive skills in music therapy. Um, so some examples of how we might do that would just simply be maybe a counting song or a rhythm activity that could involve counting as well. Um, we might have movement to reinforce concepts such as opposites, in and out, high, low, from behind, um, loud, soft. Uh, also, there could be opportunities to categorize instruments. That's an academic skill. Um, so we can work on colors and sizes and shapes and, and different sounds. Going back to physical skills, we can develop gross motor skills uh, through movement to music. We can also develop fine motor skills through playing instruments. And uh, gait training through rhythmic stimulation. Uh, and then finally, leisure skills can also be a goal area. Um, so I think what we typically, we want the, the client to be successful on uh, these, this treatment plan we have come up with for them in music therapy. But mostly we want that to translate to whatever they're doing outside of the music therapy setting. So sometimes it's really important to teach them leisure skills, especially maybe you have a client who um, is, is getting ready to transition out of school and into young adulthood. Um, they're going to need um, some tools 
to um, be able to be successful at leisure skills. So I know I talked about that we don't teach our clients instruments, but that might be a great way to develop some leisure skills. So we could develop their skills in playing instruments, and that can be something that they can do on their own time outside of the music therapy setting. Um, so that could be guitar or piano or, or singing. Um, so we could also have them participate maybe some type of choral exercise in the group if we're in a group setting, um, and then encourage them to, to join a community vocal group. Perhaps that could be something that um, would help promote leisure skills for them. Um, so research is definitely a big component. We talk about how music therapy is an evidence-based healthcare profession. We just have to validate the things that we do somehow. And like I said, sometimes it's difficult to do in music therapy. It's not um, as basic as uh, medical research, you know, a drug did or did not work type of thing, I guess. Um, so we really try to, to build up our research in music therapy and we have two peer-reviewed journals um, that exist in our profession, the Journal of Music Therapy and Music Therapy Perspectives. But we also have a lot of articles that exist in other professional um, journals, which is great. Um, and then once again, just to reiterate, we um, these are things that have specifically been researched and the clinical outcomes have addressed communication, cognition, behaviors, social skills, and emotional regulation in regard to music therapy. Um, so these are just some quotes, sorry again, it's kind of hard to see. Um, most of this information I got from the American Music Therapy Association website. Um, it's pretty good about um, saying what music therapy is and you can find music therapists. Um, and I actually have some handouts and I think these quotes appear in the handouts. Um, but these were just, I thought, um, really meaningful and, and just to prove, help prove the rationale for mu using music therapy. So this first one, music therapy can stimulate individuals to reduce negative and or self-stimulatory responses and increase participation in more appropriate and socially acceptable ways. The second one, music therapy helps individuals with autism spectrum disorder identify and appropriately express their emotions. And the third and final one, because, excuse me, music is processed in both hemispheres of the brain, it can stimulate cognitive functioning and may be used for remediation of some speech slash language skills. Recent re research notes that music may engage brain regions that overlap the human mirror neuron system. Um, that's pretty cool. That music can um, affect the brain in that way. So, um, like I said, I, I got the majority of this information from American Music Therapy Association. Also, we have um, something that my classmates and I refer to as the Bible in music therapy, which is the Introduction to Music Therapy, Theory and Practice. Um, that book describes all the populations that music therapy can benefit and, and specifically how, which is great. And then once again, Dynamic Music Therapy, which is Jennifer's company, which services the greater Indianapolis area, and that is her website for her company there. So. Um, now we have some time. If you have any questions from anything that you um, that I talked about today, or just in general, um, and maybe Jennifer also too could elaborate on um, the med waiver if you have any questions about that. Um, so specifically, music therapy in Indiana. Um, so, are there any questions? Uh, Jennifer, is there anything that you wanna? I can just add kind of chime in real quick yeah. and add some things. Yeah. So um, I know a great way I like to kind of talk about music therapy as well, especially with um, individuals with uh, um, autism. Are you guys okay with me just sitting down in that space? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, is with individuals with autism, there's such a disconnect between um, where they are uh, intellectually versus where they are communicating. And so I feel like music therapy really helps um, connect that intellectual with that communication bit. Um, because I think a lot of times there's more going on than what we're aware of. And so I really think music therapy really kind of helps that um, that connection happen and help these individuals communicate wants and needs. 
Um, oftentimes we work on um, a lot of communication skills tends to be our big areas um, with individuals with special needs. Um, and so I, I really think that's one of the things that sets music therapy apart from other things. We're working on the same sort of skills as PT, OT, speech therapists. Um, a lot of times some of the things that we do, some of our NMT techniques, are certain techniques that speech therapists use as well. Um, and we just use it with a more musical base. Um, but we're working on similar goals. So that's one of the great things I feel like about music therapy, especially with this population, um, that that's helpful and it's it's fun. You know, you give a kid a song to sing versus just speaking. I, I, I think most kids are going to enjoy the song. If you give an individual a maraca play versus a tool he has to just hold uh, to work on that grasping skill, he's probably going to go that maraca nine times out of ten. Um, so I, I really feel like it's just such a fun, creative way to work on those same school, uh, goal areas that all of the other professionals that you're going to are working on. And so we have the credentials and the certifications to work on those same similar things, and I think that's what makes really stands music therapy out versus some of the others. So, um, so I do have some information. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the Medicaid waiver in Indiana too, um, and I just kind of want to give you an oversight. I'm not, um, here you go, I have so many of them. Um, so I'm not an expert with Medicaid waiver, but my company does service individuals with Medicaid waiver. So the Medicaid waivers are, um, there's a lot of different Medicaid waivers in Indiana. Two of the ones that would, um, are for autism and um, any other sort of developmental disability are the family sports waiver and the community community community, uh, community integration and habilitation waiver. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, so uh, the CIH waiver. So those two waivers um, do support families with children with autism or um, uh, I guess children or family members with autism because we do have some adults that um, get the waivers as well. Um, typically, when you first start with the waiver, you get the family supports waiver. It's um, a um, lump sum that's given to families to work on community-based services. So music therapy, um, behavior management, um, and then there's also just support to come into your home, take the child out um, into the community to help work on building the child's relationship with the community. So that's kind of the whole focus of of these. Um, with the Medicaid waiver, you do get Medicaid as well, and they are not based on income, they are based on need. Um, so it's really great that families aren't being denied, and then you also get that bit for the Medicaid as well to help with some medical needs that can coincide with already insurance that you already have, or some families choose to just go that route. Um, you know, each family is kind of different on what they decide. Um, so there is an application um, process through the FSSA um, in order to get onto the waiver. When I first started on the waiver about five years ago, um, the youngest we were seeing clients was like 16. Um, I'm happy to say we just got a referral for a two-year-old with Down syndrome. Um, so since Down syndrome is diagnosed at birth, we're seeing clients with Down syndrome earlier than we're seeing uh, clients with autism. Autism, we're still seeing about four or five is when they're becoming onto the waiver, just because after they're diagnosed, then you've got the process of getting the waiver and, and things like that. Um, but hopefully there's something that they can do for the individuals with autism that we can start getting it a little bit sooner. But it's nice because there used to be a huge gap between first steps and when individuals would get onto the waiver, but now that gap is becoming much less um, and even some overlap, I think, with especially seeing some two-year-olds. Um, so do you have any questions about waiver, about music therapy, about my company? 